Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. It's Ed Gamble here. You may be able to sense excitement in my voice because it is an exciting day on the Taskmaster podcast because we are starting a new series. It's series 13 has just started showing on channel four and we're here to talk about it week by week. You have hopefully just watched episode one of series 13 and what a kickoff episode it was. That's what we'll be talking about today with our very special guest, Desiree Birch. Desiree Birch, of course, from Series 12 of Taskmaster. So she has very recent memories about what it was like to be in the lineup. And I can't wait for Desiree to join me and chat through this new lineup together. But I have other news, exciting Taskmaster Universe news, because this podcast is now not the only podcast in the official Taskmaster podcast cinematic universe. No, we welcome a new podcast baby to the family. Taskmaster podcast, the people's podcast. The people's podcast will celebrate everything from the Taskmaster universe. It's hosted by, drumroll, not me, Lou Sanders. Lou Sanders, champion of series eight. And each week, Lou will be talking to a Taskmaster superfan who will share how the show has changed their life, taken over their life, and how it's a big focus in the fun that they have. In the first episode, Lou will be talking to Nathan Good, who is the first person to complete the Taskmaster book. And by that, I mean go through all the tasks and do all the tasks, not the first person to finish reading it. Uh, that That wouldn't be that impressive. Lou will also be joined by Jack Bernhardt, who has been on this podcast many times. He's a Taskmaster expert, a Taskmaster statistician. And I'll never say that word right. And he goes head to head in a Taskmaster themed quiz called Ask Master. You've got to pronounce that correctly. Ask Master. There'll be behind-the-scenes news, interviews with the crew, and a chance for fans to get in touch and share their favourite Taskmaster moments. The People's Podcast will be released every week, and you can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, don't forget about us. Just because there's a new brilliant podcast, you just add it to your rotor. Keep coming back here every week, Thursday at 10pm, straight after the main show is broadcast on Channel 4 at 9pm to catch up and hear everything that happened in that episode discussed at length by me and my special guests. Woo! That's a lot of admin, but we're going to crack on now. Let's chat to Desiree Birch about Series 13, Episode 1. Welcome back, Desiree, to the Taskmaster podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. I feel so honoured. Of course, you did a wonderful job last time, so we we couldn't not have you back to chat about Series 13, despite... Of course, you're not in this series. Does that does that fill your heart with sadness when you I watch a new every... lineup? subsequent series uh that i won't be in will fill my heart with sadness as as well as all the ones that came before that i couldn't have been in um because i had all the right answers uh so (laughs) yes yeah i i would imagine everybody who watches the next series goes like oh i know what i've what i've done or that seems like fun or i wish i could have done that one yeah i mean specifically for you i guess it's watching the studio uh records and everyone's sat close to each everyone's other together. and there's an audience yeah. everyone's together like a, a pack of dogs or something in a kennel <laughs> just all on top of each other just sucking in everybody's spike proteins like nothing ever happened what is that about so <laughs> so rather than actually i thought you'd be jealous of them that they got to sit together and there was an audience rather than that you seem to disrespect them a little bit <laughs> sitting together like oh yeah we're fine we've all got shots nothing's going on here no i mean i'd be a little bit jealous uh could you tell um but i mean i i don't know because i feel like once you get back in the pack you're you're competing with each other whereas Mm. when you're far away you're just trying to get greg's love yeah Yeah, Which, I mean, is the point point. of the show. But I think there's a little bit more like your elbows can reach to the others when you're sat together. So I feel like they're already starting to go in on each other a little bit. Whereas it took us a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. I think you, yeah, you did go in on each other a bit, but it was a very friendly series. Yeah, and everyone felt like they were supporting each other a bit. In this one, it's episode one. Ardell gets stuck in almost immediately to right other away. people's efforts, and yeah. then they're they're slagging each other off. I mean, it's great. I, I, both of those techniques, I, I'm on board with. But yeah, it's maybe it's the the closeness of the seating. 
I think, well, I mean, you know, in season 12, like you in series 12, you couldn't see, uh, but we were all in those little glass tanks that shoot money up from the bottom. We were completely <laughs> separated from each other. So we were just reaching out for any kind of human contact, yeah, sure, which means we yeah. were happy to have gotten it. It was really lovely. But yeah, Arnold, like right off, I mean, one wonders if he realized what the point of the show was after he recorded all of the VTs. <laughs> And then was just like, well, I just got to go for the jugular each yeah. and every episode to see if I can, you know, get my he, points back up. Even though he knows what's coming. When he knows what, what he's got, he's like, I'm going to have to go all guns blazing. It is amazing. Um, so the first prize task of Series 13, very exciting. It's all kicking off. The first prize task is the thing that if you found it in a skip, you would be most excited by. I mean, I wish that someone had asked me this question my entire really? life. I lived in New York for 13 years and my entire existence came off of the curb. <laughs> I, I, when I left New York, I was like, I didn't buy any of this <laughs> at all. And some of it is fantastic. What's the so, best? What's the best stuff you found on, on the street or in a skip? A, but, a know. green velvet couch was the wow. best thing I found on the street. And we, uh, it was uh, amazing because I lived in Astoria, which is in Queens, a uh, neighborhood of uh, New York. So it was a 15 minute walk because this was three avenues over. I was walking down my own street yeah, and uh, was like, Arr! there was like a ginormous, <laughs> like, I want to say it was at least eight feet long. Yeah. Um, you know, like you could luxuriate all on this couch Amazing. and still have a friend sitting there, like with your head in their lap, sitting there. Um, and real I'm like, real insight into your home life there, Desiree. Yes, you invi exactly. Invite people over, just some friends, watch a bit of TV, and you you lay straight, lay fully straight the into their lap. And I'm like, are we still friends now? Are we still friends, or would you like to leave? Um, so, <laughs> so um, I was living on the second floor. And my room, I would have been my roommate at the time. No, it was my poor friend, Kyle. God bless him. He will be my friend forever because he helped me carry this couch like three avenues to my place and then in through three separate doors. Gosh. And it was so heavy, <laughs> like just like t-shirt soakingly heavy um, that, yeah, when we got it inside, I was like, well, I'm never moving. <laughs> and yeah, Kyle was like, I will never move this couch again. So you either live here till you die or you burn this couch upon exiting. Um, I did leave it for my roommate when I left. So she inherited the trauma. My um, my worry with things like that, especially with furniture that you find, that it's going to have some sort of bugs in it. Oh, of course. Or it's going to stink or it's going to have a dead dog in one of the cushions, something like of that, course. you know? Yes. But I guess once you've held it close to your chest and hurled it up two flights of stairs, you feel like you've embraced it enough sure. to go like, I know, I know this couch and it's okay. You just yeah. tell yourself that. They're it's your like bugs now. Yeah. You know, when you've ever gone to another, yes, they're my bugs. These are my scabies <laughs> now, and we are one. Um, I maybe put some baking soda on the couch and then vacuumed it off like sure. that does anything. Yeah. Uh, but it's all just this magical thinking. You know, like if you ever travel to like a place and you stay in a hotel that's like like three stars at a push, you yeah. know, and you like, you walk in and you're like, well, this is a hole, you know? And then after a day, you're like, oh, it's kind of cute. And then by the end, you're like, oh, I'm going to miss this old dump. Like, if you stay <laughs> it's that it's just about like proximity and time and it took us 45 minutes to carry it just up the blocks before we yeah. got it to because we had to like stop and put it down every you know 20 steps or something um so yeah at that point we knew that couch very intimately if there were scabies yeah. to be had we had them already so we may as well enjoy the couch or i'd be worried about crime scene about it being a crime scene yeah, I mean, we did sit on it first. So if there was going to be blood that came pouring out of it, <laughs> we would have found that. I, think. I would have gone over it with a black light as well. Just yeah. To, oh just no! To check. Don't don't ever go over anything you love with a black light. <laughs> You are especially clean and, um, you know, uh, discerning. Uh, if you really fancy something on the streets of New York, you need to not look a gift horse in the mouth, the face, or even like directly. You have to look at it from the side and be like, I have a horse. <laughs> Just pick up the horse and take it back. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And twist it through three different doors. It's going to be great. So here's the prize task was if you found it in a skip, you'd be most excited by it. I think all of them brought in things that they had found in a skip. 
There's, Which is, yeah. There yeah, was there no, was very um, little imagination in terms of imagine if you found this. Because you, you could bring in anything exciting at that point, couldn't you? That is true. But I do think that every single person has found something in a skip that they're so excited to tell yeah. people that they found in a skip that yeah. they just want to bring that in. Just It's like, you know, when you got something for like five quid and everybody likes it or you think it's really cool. You're you're like, oh, I, oh, or I found it on the street or I got it from, uh, I got it at a festival. It was by a bin. Uh, you know, you're just really excited about that. So. So I think that everybody was like, oh, I'm going to bring in the thing I got as opposed to, oh, I fantasized about skips yeah. and what might be in them. And every time I go to the tip, I hope that I'm going to see X at the top yeah. of the. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if, if I was Ardell and all I'd found in a skip was that old trophy, I probably would have made something up. Um, <laughs> because, look, I already love Ardell to bits. I think he's going to be wonderful. absolutely brilliant on this series. Yeah. But he is very relaxed uh, yes. with the things he's brought in and his own task performance, but a very aggressively, a very ag- aggressive about other people's task performance, which I'm is great. I'm certain he asked somebody, and I'm curious to know who he asked about, you know, like, how do I do well on Taskmaster? Because the answer, the correct answer is cheat, lie, and like completely dob everybody else in. Like yeah, that is the yeah. best way to do it because you can't just rely on sheer talent or your abilities. Like that's not what this is about. <laughs> because the trophy he brought in, I, look, I love it when a series kicks off with an utterly underwhelming prize. <laughs> because it was, everyone was so excited. It's the start of series 13. Here we go. This is the prize task. Woo woo woo. Ardor, what have you brought put. in? A trophy. <laughs> Silence. I mean... <laughs> You know, in isolation, I can see how you go, oh, that would be great. Like, literally, yeah. I win. I found a trophy. But if you, the first answer you got is not the right one on this show, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did. it's just sort of gentle ambition from Ardell, and I appreciated that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing him on the series. That was the uh, one he was hoping wasn't going to be first when they... Yeah, <laughs> definitely. The task. He's definitely. Like, as long as it's not in the first episode, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, it is? Okay, oh, cool. So I better make sure that everybody else gets dubbed in <laughs> every time they do something. Well, there were a few. Uh, look, Sophie brought in a sofa. So very much on the same page as you A woman there. after my own um, heart. It, it wasn't an eight foot long green velvet sofa. No, I've got to say. It was, it was a brown leather sofa. Um, I personally wouldn't be excited if I found a sofa in a skip. Because no, of all the things we mentioned. That that it'd sofa. Be- no that sofa. yeah no. because it's like that sofa looks worn out when you buy it from new so mm-hmm. if you <laughs> see it in a skip you're like oh something's wrong with that and there's a body inside of it yes yeah at yeah. best or but bed bugs at worst yeah sophie seemed to be suggesting that it was a millennial thing that if you find a sofa you've got to take the sofa and i got i got the impression she was setting greg up if he criticized the sofa she'd say something about boomers buying all the houses and, uh, <laughs> She was ready. <laughs> she was ready. She was poised, ready to go. Um, yes. But, but who then also... in comedy hasn't been poor before? Yeah. We've all... I, d- I didn't realize there was such a culture of like getting things. Well, I guess, do you go to like the recycling center to get it out of a skip? Because a lot of times here, there's like no fly tipping, which means there's mm-hmm. no free stuff on the sidewalk here. Yeah, there's no fly tipping. But I guess if there's a skip outside a house and people are moving or they're getting rid of stuff or having a house clearance they leave put stuff in the skip as alex said i think it's technically theft but you may as well go for it i i mean i went i went to the tip recently and i had some old dumbbells and stuff that i was using during the pandemic i could have used those man well exactly and i i I felt (laughs) bad i was just literally like i need to clear some stuff at my house so i drove a lot of other stuff to the tip as well and literally as soon as i got them out the car this bloke ran over and went i'll have those yeah. And I literally just loaded up the stuff into his van. He was so happy. I don't think he was there dropping anything else off at the skip. He just turned up with a van, opened the doors and just watched what everyone else was dropping off. Yeah. <laughs> That's like me in the parking lot behind my uh, apartments because there's like 10 spaces and like 100 people. So everybody's yeah. just like circling, like yeah. something going to free up what's happening. What's going on? Hey, are you leaving that? Great. Boom. Yeah, I, I feel him. Um, so I did look. I didn't mind. I didn't mind Sophie's, um, but I personally wouldn't be excited about finding it in a skip because I'd no. be worried about what was going on there. I'd probably be more excited to find the sofa than I would be to find a uh, n- uh, now. That's what I call music twenty four cassette tape. Yes, I mean that Judy I, brought in. I feel like okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I knew this when I heard that Judy was going to be on the next series. I was like, I know this woman. She is a bullshit artiste. <laughs> like, chef's kiss, you know? Yeah. Like, so that is what we are going to see a lot of in the studio, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Like, I feel like she's bringing uh, some major Guz Khan vibes. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. that means I hope that some of the time she's going to have like, an incredible like shit hot studio prize you know and then other times she's gonna have you know a blood pressure monitor <laughs> <laughs> that she got off of you know her gran or her uncle yeah. or something you know but she's got the gift of just being like i will sell you anything that happens to yeah. appear in my hand yeah. i saw this in my neighbor's bin as i was walking to the car this morning <laughs> i also well, she does have Guz Khan vibes, but Guz would eventually break and do a cheeky little smile and you'd yes. be like, he'd sort yeah. of give up. Yeah. Whereas She's Judy like, no, will keep I will go down. going. She yeah. will keep going. I will go to the mat for this lie and I know it's garbage <laughs> and I don't care. I will fight your whole block. <laughs> also, I feel like she would have brought in that tape regardless of what the first prize was. <laughs> Because it's just the tape. Yes. So it's, it's, she she's would... just, I've just found it. If, if I found it in a skip, I'd be happy. And she'd just go, oh, kids don't know about winding the tapes back around. You're like, you just wanted to make that point. That's why you brought that in. Uh-huh. <laughs> what if it wasn't in a skip? What if it should have gone into a skip a decade or more ago? And it was just somewhere in the back of her closet. Um, Chris Ramsey, uh, who I think is immediately one to watch in this series. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Is, uh, he brought in the Easily. businessmen briefcase. This, uh, to me, is was the Spawn. best prize. I yeah. think this is the most exciting thing you could find in a skip. Because yeah. is it a million pounds? Is it the dude from Pulp Fiction, Soul? Yeah. What is in that? <laughs> you know, like, to me, that's, like, so 90s. And it's like, oh, the only thing that could have made it better is if it were attached to a set of handcuffs. Oh, yes. Like... Yeah. It's just anything could be in the briefcase. Probably nothing, but yeah. I would thoroughly search it, including the lining. Like, what is the story of that briefcase? Yeah, I mean, it. it I, I love an escape room. I've made that very clear on multiple occasions. <laughs> I think that's the part, same part of me that loves a briefcase is the yeah. escape room fan. Because yeah. also, they quite often appear in escape rooms. You go in, there's a briefcase, yep. and you've got to find yep. the code or whatever. And the um, the where you slide the catches to the side and the things mm -hmm. go thunk, thunk. That is yeah. one of the most oh, exciting sounds in the world. Nothing more exciting than the sound of something that has previously been unlocked, yeah. unlocking oh, for you. Oh my goodness. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, and genius for him to go and you'll find out what's in it at the end of the show. Uh -huh. So he's upping that excitement. It was, it was perfect. Yeah. This uh, I think a, I agree with you. It was, that, yeah. For me, that was a five points. That was a five pointer. And this is somebody who definitely knows how to play this game. He's a yeah. ringer. He's been studying. <laughs> <laughs> but the five points actually went to Bridget for the last will and testament, which I think is definitely improved by the fact she found it and it is up in her hall. <laughs> yeah, because... I guess how could it not be like those are mm -hmm. it's one of those things that you find and you feel like you can't throw away. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to a, a you know, a, a thrift shop or something and you find like a photo album or something and like yeah. you actually happen to buy it. You're just like, these are this is somebody something. And I don't know if you think you're going to find the the, you know, relations of the dead person or something, or if it's just as, you know, or if it's just a worthwhile artifact that you might eBay one day or something. Yeah. But like, it's one of those things that like, I mean, it was like an equilled, like it was like written right after the constitution or something. Yeah, it's like, crazy. It was, it's like 300 years old or something. Uh, how does that, and also the person who threw that in the skip definitely uh, did it behind the pack back of the person who owned it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they would never let that go into a skip. Come on, let's get rid of this finally. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that, look, that is a very exciting thing to find in a skip. Of course it is. But I just think that little bit of mystery that Ramsey brought was probably Agreed. the one that nudged it over. Agreed. But Agreed. it was five points for Bridget, four points for Chris, three points for Sophie, two points for Judy, and one point to Ardle. What a way to start. Bridget, what have you brought in? A someone's last will and testament. Wow. She genuinely found this in her skip. This is what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh, man. About 300 years old. Look at Ardor's little face. Well, uh, well, the trophy's think... been pissed on already. <laughs> there was one point over the years, cos I found it years ago, where I thought, well, am I going to have loads of bad luck, you know? <laughs> because you found the... Because I've got it up in my hallway and I don't know who's... <laughs> <laughs> Did you try and 
track the person down. Oh, no, no. No, I think it's fair to say they're not around anymore. <laughs> Task one, find all 10 ducks. You must stay in the lab, fastest wins. You have a maximum of 20 minutes. Your time started when you entered the lab. This is a good <laughs> one to kick off with because yes, I think it immediately shows people's urgency and energy levels, which marks them out as to what sort of contestant they're going to be in the series. So let's start by talking about Ardell again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. I mean, you're absolutely right that that's a perfect start of like, what kind of energy does this person naturally bring to everything? And it also just shows off to every uh, contestant, like, this is the show. The show yeah. is there are no rules. Yeah. yeah the task started before now. Yeah. So you yeah. already screwed up. Go. Um, <laughs> it's so great. And yeah, I'm looking at that blank, blank room. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't see a single duck. Like Chris found the only duck first. Yeah. You know, so yeah, how, we're done. How do you do it? Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll say now, I think I'm allowed to say this, that I have filmed this task for Champion of Champions, but they didn't use it for Champion of Champions and they refined it and used it for this series. Amazing. So I know the feeling of standing in that room being told you have to find all the ducks and there's li you can't see any, any ducks. And it's yeah. panicking. It's really panic inducing. Yeah. Um. So they've, ch I mean, they've changed it quite a lot from what I know. Uh, for instance, I think it's 10 ducks now. They just said find as many ducks as you can. I think there were way more than 10 when I did it. Okay. Um, and also when Judy finds the duck that they forgot about. Finds the I ghost duck? Like the dead from duck from the Champion from of Champions that was filming. from you? Amazing. I believe so, yeah. Had you found that duck when it was I your did not. So as soon as Judy found that, I was like, oh shit, another duck I didn't find. <laughs> Did anyone else find any other ducks you didn't find? Or I'm not sure. I, I've not spoken. I I've not spoken to anyone else about it who did Champion of Champions. I'm not. Sure. They might have even stopped people doing it after I did it. Maybe I screwed it up so you badly they were like knock it on the head. Um, <laughs> but I I made Alex pull his trousers down and he was wearing pants covered in ducks. So I don't ah. know if that was the case here. Um, that, oh man, yeah. Because somebody did, I can't remember who had him take off of his shirt. Ramsey made him take. Yeah, his shirt he did. Off. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I mean. And you're like, okay, no ducks there. But then, yeah. I don't know, it's rough to keep going because you don't want to make, you know, little Alex Horn get yeah. down into his skivvies, you know? Like, it's spreading it's just his like cheeks. something like, oh, he already <laughs> takes it so hard in the studio. You don't want to make him strip yeah. down to his bucks or shorts. Pull your cheeks apart. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, give me that torch and pull your cheeks apart. <laughs> now cough. <laughs> cough, damn it. <laughs> so... Ardell's energy that he's bringing in this, I think, is going to be indicative of the rest of the series. There is no urgency. There's a time limit. There's a 20-minute time limit. And the editor is forced to use the slow baseline track, yeah. which is very rarely employed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if for Ardell, for uh, a man in his sort of um, time of life, he's just like, all I have is time. Like, there's yeah. something so, like, just, you know, a life sentence kind of yeah. energy he brought to <laughs> like even finding the like task that. yeah even finding the task and then just slowly bringing out chicken after chicken it was farcical just he'd disappear for ages and come back like, with another chicken <laughs> when has a hen ever been a duck mate like you, the, the house is typically covered in ducks you've seen the show you know what the ducks are yeah. <laughs> what, what are we doing um so <laughs> He God really takes him. his time, and I love it. I mean, you need that energy to match to to someone like Chris or yes. Sophie, um, who are yes. both who are both pretty pretty speedy in the way they're doing things. The the energy is good. S Sophie's stamping on the chickens to try and find stuff. Chris yeah. is ripping up the floor. He's smashing that box open to find the red herring in there. It's uh, great. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I feel like he's he's our our clear lead horse in general. Like when he pulled up the flooring, yeah, that never would have occurred to me to pull up the floor. Yeah, yeah. I so, I don't know. I mean, I didn't pull up the floor. I don't think when I did it, but I don't. Yeah, all I the ducks know. were down there. <laughs> just destructive. You've just got to be destructive in this one. I think. Yes. Is the key. Yeah. Um, but Sophie was great as well. Good energy getting up on Alex's shoulders. Yeah. Just really going for it, using Alex in that way. Amazing. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't get a bonus point. I feel yeah. like abusing Alex is the way to uh, the Taskmaster's heart. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, Bridget uh, found four ducks. Pretty good going. Yeah. Uh, and exhibits uh, some classic Taskmaster, early Taskmaster paranoia of going, is there anything called a duck that's not a duck? 
is there a type of nail that's called a duck? That's a duck. That was... <laughs> that, yeah, that um, definitely... <laughs> Is there a nail that's called a duck? Is there something at the at, at the DIY store that I need to know that's actually called a duck? Yeah. Is there a toilet duck somewhere? Oh, that should have been for art. That should have been oh, <laughs> good. good idea, actually. <laughs> that Damn. Was, yeah, that would spin me out, that whole thing, I think. Yeah, you just worry so much that you're not doing the right thing, especially when you can't see any ducks anywhere. No, and but she found the French duck up there. Mm, now, that was, was that just about getting up high or was that also, I can't recall, that wasn't in like black light. That was just painted clearly. Yeah, it was painted it was just... on and I don't think Sophie found it. So Even though she was like right up the, there. She was right up there. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure she speaks French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it was interesting because there was a lot of French in this particular episode and I guess yeah. it's relying on a general French knowledge of numbers at least up to 13 and animals uh, only Some animals, a duck. Yeah. Basic animals, <laughs> yeah. Judy found six ducks but didn't find five ducks because she found that extra duck. Yes. Um, and I do like she's already marked herself out as being completely no nonsense with Alex. Yeah. When she found one of the ducks just going, "Where are you from?" and he said, "Where he's from?" She went, "No." <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I think that um, no is probably like my favorite punchline ever. Um, and just someone just going, no. No. <laughs> so just like everyone's like, hey, blah, blah. like there's this, there's this, um, if you ever seen Fear and Loathing Las- in Las Vegas, the film, I actually haven't, like no. w- when he's like racing back through the desert and he gets pulled over by Gary Busey and he's like, why do you have like three crates of soap? He's like, I want to stay clean. No, I laugh at that every time. I've laughed at that maybe a hundred times because I've seen that movie that yeah. frequently. Um, I have another comedian friend who always would just punchline stuff and people would be like, hot. Huh? she go, no. And just no. like with the most deadpan face and I'd lose my mind. So oh, I will great. love Judy forever for many reasons, but one of it just being no. No. And also you've got to love Judy for the first enduring image of this series of Taskmaster, um, her in the dark, lighting her face, her, face up her, with the her sort of, Yeah, her like uh, goosebumps bumps meets rave culture, yeah. like black light glowing. Like... <laughs> Say a duck on my face! Is Say there a duck on my face! Is there a duck on my face! And even in the studio, going, what's there a duck on my face? What's there a duck on my face? Like, you would think if she was sitting in the makeup chair, she would feel, you know, like, you know, just, you know, whoever's doing makeup, just drawing very carefully a duck somewhere on her face. Like, one wonders if she idea, was just though. half awake and just like, could could someone have gotten a duck on my face? But I I get how this show makes you question everything. Yeah, absolutely. It was a yeah. good idea to get the makeup person to draw a duck on the face. Although boys don't get the makeup, so that would have been that would have been uh, tricky. Yeah, you guys never get anything. You like walk no. in 15 minutes before and they're like, "Here's some lip gloss and like yeah, a powder yeah. puff. Have yeah. fun with your life." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, it was another one point for Ardell, uh, three points for Bridget, three points for Sophie, four points for Judy, and the big five for Chris. Duck. Okay. <laughs> duck, 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 duck. Two minutes. Ah! Ah! Oh, found one! Really? Yeah. That's a stray duck. That's a duck. Yeah, that's a duck we didn't know was there. <laughs> Oh, the floor. Duck! Duck! Yes! 30 seconds. Is she drawing a duck on my face? No, no, I, mm. Is there a duck on my face? One more duck. Oh my god, this is so frustrating! Ha <laughs> ha! That was horrible. <laughs> Task two, create the best picture of the Taskmaster using only lipstick on your lips. You have 10 minutes and your picture must fill most of the canvas. A so, portrait task straight away. Yeah, I mean, uh, boys really don't know how to use lipstick, do they? Because <laughs> Arnold was just like, Ugh, like kind of like the, the sort of Labrador retriever kind yeah. of style all over with the, the mouth and just sort of went went for it. Well, I actually think that was a good technique when it came to painting. I mean, his painting was pretty bad, I thought, but um, <laughs> so but the smear technique. when he when he put it on and then like just smeared it across the canvas, that was as close as you could get to painting as yeah as possible, right? It's true, but I guess it's kind of like I mean, 
I can see how he may have started out thinking that his technique was going to produce something that it definitely didn't and that he may have had more time. Like, if you had, like, a day to paint a portrait with different layers of that, then that's definitely a technique. But I think in 20 minutes you just want something that approaches accuracy. Yeah. Um, Although (laughs) I will say, as someone who's bullshit her way through a uh, painting task, um, the uh, the aura, what did he say, the the, the energy? Aura, (laughs) yeah, he said aura, the aura is implied. I mean, it is incredible that he tried to bullshit that because then he, <laughs> then he suggested that Sophie's didn't physically look like Greg, and we should be judging it on all the physical merits when he just said his was good because of the aura, the aura around <laughs> it. And yes, I mean the physical merits of the painting and of his technique were both completely out of whack. Yeah, but then he was like, dreadful. "Wait a second, it needs to be accurate." He got three points. He did not deserve three points. It looked like a shrunken head. He. He's- Sure, but I guess maybe he just deserved three points for having hung in this long, Yeah, you know, <laughs> with that just general attitude of like, you know what, I know what I did and didn't do on those days, and so I'm here now, and I got to work this aura yeah. energy. Uh, I, I think Judy was underscored here. She got one point, and it, look, it wasn't a good painting, was it? Um but, Hers was on the throne, right? Yeah, on the throne, I and mean, she filled she filled the whole canvas. And they seem to forget about that when they were scoring it. Exactly, your picture See, must that, fill most of the canvas. That is that is quite annoying sometimes because there are rules given that are then sort of deprioritized because whatever because of how we feel on the day, and it's like, well, wait a second, you know what exact? But then again, I'm a little rule follower, which is why yeah. I didn't win the series. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I I felt bad for her because honestly. From an impressionistic point of view, like if you stood, if you if, if everyone was really spaced out like we were in season 12, from a certain mm-hmm. distance, that would have looked great because it looks yeah. like a red chair and a mm-hmm. black figure sort of sitting off to the side, you know, implicitly judging everything. And that yeah. is a portrait of the Taskmaster in general, right? Um, so I feel like she could have yeah. gotten more than, how much did she get for that? She got one point. I, I feel That's like rough. she deserved at least one, one other point, really, yeah, for filling the I whole think- canvas at least. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, Sophie uh, painted a Dorian Gray-inspired Taskmaster portrait, a sort of hideous version. I mean, it, she used the portrait that's in... That's in, in the room, the, which, to be the, fair, uh, it's like it's a Dia de las Muertes version sort of of Gray. Yeah. So, like, it's going to look that way. That was the picture she was copying. So, like, how well did she approach that picture and achieve that picture, I think, should be the question, you know? It's like you have piece, to judge, yeah. you know, a piece of art based on whether or not it achieved what it was trying to do, not whether or not you like what it's trying to do, you know? Like, totally. That's just, you know? So I think that that maybe deserved a little bit more. Plus, like, her technique was exquisite. Like, just the she application really of off, lipstick and her... got off with that canvas. Yeah, like, she yeah, really... She was- put soul into that you know it was like um it was like do you remember when farrah fossa was making those paintings of her covered in paint naked and throwing herself against the canvas you know just sort of aggressively like yeah yeah, it's kind of like a feminist version of like a jackson pollock you know it's like all about the energy of what's happening onto the canvas you know because yeah i go i seen a whole pollock exhibition at the moma and i was just like i mean it's like for a bunch of paint it's the best version of someone splattering a bunch of paint yeah. Like that, it is. It is the pinnacle. Like defines the genre. But I still don't know what I'm looking at. Besides, <laughs> I don't know space. I don't know, right? So you know, I I definitely felt like you know she had something going for hers just in the um in the technique. I think an art critic would have had to step in and give that more. Yeah, the 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 the, t- the technique and the process that she went through was yes. so artistic that yes. the, the final product deserves re looking at. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I agree. That I agree. Lens, I would say. Um, yeah. Well, Bridget's process seemed to be uh, putting herself in the mind of Greg and what sort of home life he has. And the home life he clearly has is <laughs> he has crisps I don't know. for tea. Yeah, wait, what? what wait, <laughs> he has crisps it... for tea. Because she, 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 when she was imagining being Greg, she said, I, I imagine him coming home and going, oh, hello, I'm Greg. I think I'll have some crisps yes. for my tea. <laughs> Yep, because people tend to walk into their house and announce their names to yeah. someone and then say what they're going to eat because, yeah, that's, um, you know, that's everyone's home life. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, there was something very, um, you know, it definitely had, um, 
I don't know. It just looked like a cat. It just looked like a fetish cat to me. Yeah. You know, with, with eyeballs that were maybe also boobs, but I, I could get into that. Like everything's like, you know, it's like eyeballs, boobs, like where's the face? Who knows? I'm yeah. having Chris with my tea. Hello, I'm Greg. I'm home. <laughs> The little the bra that Greg was wearing with the little dress and she imagined him saying, where's my crisps? I hate my job. You know, it yeah. was all, you uh-huh. know, she she put a lot into it. And yeah. also, I think we should, if we're recognizing Sophie's technique, we should recognize Bridget's technique of looking absolutely insane every time she applied lipstick. <laughs> she was like, oh no, but a panic. Like I'm yeah. that crazy old lady who doesn't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> but her eyes just went so wide every time yes. she put the lipstick on. Yeah, and then tried guess... to tell Alex that that's that's the way all women put lipstick. On. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see more of Bridget in this series. Yeah, well, I mean, I imagine like there's going to be a lot of her going, like, what the hell is this? You know, I know how to put on lipstick and I can paint a thing, but what you're asking is nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah that's pretty much the gist of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about Chris because I was blown away by this portrait. That was I thought phenomenal. This, this, it looked like a photo. I thought it, it was really incredible. Did, like he, yeah, like it could have been like that picture of the Queen at Heathrow made up of a tiny little other, like he only used yeah. one color and he got all of the shadowing and everything. Like how how did he do that? I want to see the video of the entire thing. Yeah. And does he have some secret artistic ability that we I didn't know about? So. Because he seems surprised. He seems absolutely blown away that he's managed to do it and at the reaction to it. And is the he fact he, co- he copied that portrait was just, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Is he just surprised that everybody else is so bad at copying yeah, a portrait? Because he's like, <laughs> oh, I just thought everybody could do this when you weren't paying attention in class. You could just draw pictures of everybody. But you guys yeah. are really bad at this. <laughs> And Bridget tries to come from at the end by saying, oh, if you don't have the picture of that you were copying from, you wouldn't know it was Greg. It's like, you you absolutely would. And you yeah. get what the picture is doing. And it does look like Greg. I, th- I thought it was amazing. Also, if you didn't have this show, you wouldn't know that any of these pictures were Greg. <laughs> yeah. You'd just be like, I hope that these children get better soon from whatever's <laughs> making them sick and in the hospital painting pictures. So, like, of course you need some context to judge any of this. But... Yeah. Um, it was a very well-deserved five points for Chris. Uh, Four points for Bridget, which I'm not sure about, because as Chris said, it did look like a haunted sex doll. Um, <laughs> but three... like, you know, sexy and yeah. made of crisps. Sure, but haunted. Um, <laughs> three points to Ardell, three points to Sophie, and one point to Judy, which we both agree was too harsh. Yeah. Here are Ardell's lips in action. Oh, this he did good. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's now, me. earlier, Ardell, you mentioned the word clown. I... <laughs> <laughs> one of Britain's great clowns. Yes. <laughs> the most important thing, the stuff that, you know, is the aura, which is not, like, painted, it's just implied. OK. <laughs> and what do you sense of my aura? Specialness. Um... <laughs> Blimey. I wasn't expecting good stuff. Task three, devise a duel and have a duel with Alex. You have 20 minutes to devise your duel. The most exciting duel wins. Tricky task, I thought, Desiree. Yeah, but this is a hot task. This is yeah. one of those that makes you go, oh, you guys know what you're doing, don't you? Yeah. I mean, because it is, you know, contained creativity, but it's it's mm-hmm. kind of too open in yeah. a way, you know? I mean, but it, it's kind of like, it's it reminds me of the proposal task that we had in season yes, 12. Yes, I was about to say, exactly, yeah. Yeah, where it's kind of like, so I can do anything. Like, it's like you've got the, the container solely what we all know about a duel basically mm-hmm. from i i presume like you know uh looney tunes cartoons i don't i'm yes. trying to think of another yeah. duel i've seen um, well, well i guess all westerns but mainly enough. uh back to the future three i would go yes. with as oh the, uh, yeah the main yeah, duel. yeah yeah of course yeah. i mean the truest western for uh, yeah. you know <laughs> anyone concerned right the original western um mainly that for sure so um so yeah i mean i just uh, i i I was so excited about this task. And I also had that moment of watching it and going, oh, I have no idea what I would do for this because the yeah. there is a, um, the I think the impetus is to overthink it, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you could go eat or underthink it and wind up throwing fruit at your friend. Well, so there's some, <laughs> there's some real underthinking here and mainly coming from Ardle again. 
Um, it's an underthinky episode for Arnold. <laughs> Arnold. I mean, to give him credit, the the dish glove slap was was yeah. you know very like okay, you set me up for something that yeah. I then don't feel was entirely delivered. Yeah, I think yeah. So it was a big build up, and then the eye. I like the eye patch. Uh, I yep. loved all of that. Yep, that um, was beautiful to mess with depth perception. And then they threw fruit at each other. It was I, what I've written down here is it's slow and gentle like Ardell. Yeah. <laughs> now there are some contexts in which that's a good thing, but yeah. most of the show <laughs> is not that context. Um, yeah, like I kind of wanted to see all that fruit come out of a t-shirt gun. Or, yeah. you know, so, like, not that they, maybe they have one of those. Who knows what's in that shed? But you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I think that needed one, if he was going to use the fruit, it needed w- at least one one to two more elements mm-hmm. to make it like the task we want to see him do. Besides yes. just lobbing the fruit, I think. There were a couple, but at least it was a duel. You can't argue that that was a duel. There were two that were absolutely not duels. Um, <laughs> and let's talk about Judy first. Uh <laughs> I absolutely love this. It was one point again, but I feel like she should have got another point just for the sheer brass neck of doing this. Yeah, I think it, so. I think it is, <laughs> it's hard to figure out when that is rewarded and when that is punished, yeah. you know? Because sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, okay, so you really did that. But um, I, yeah, I, I one wonders about the, the spirit of the task being honored <laughs> in that well, case, you know? Because it's like, you're not actually putting up a fight at all, no. really, at that point. You know? Judy, Judy honored her own spirit, which was to do as little as possible. Yes, uh, and have that drink. And have that drink and be able to throw things at Alex with no fear of having anything thrown back at her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even even just putting Alex in size five to eight roller skates just so his feet must have been hurting and cramping. I can't believe that they fit those things on his feet, to be honest, <laughs> because he's a very he's a tall man. You know, he like is. he's he's definitely going to have big he's definitely going to have to shop at the drag queen store if he wants to wear heels. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not a like, oh, let's just go to shoe and figure it out. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I that's I mean, I yeah, I. I have to give him credit for even doing that because I would have thrown the skates at something and gone home. Yeah. Like, especially anything painful on my feet. Oh, God, no. I will hurt you. I will find you later and, and do some, some nasty things to you and your family. Um, but he it was did it. wonderful to watch Judy, though, do it. Yeah. Like, she, I mean, just You better enjoy go and get your ball, babes. Just an amazing quote. You better go and get your ball, babes. <laughs> get your ball, babes. Go get your ball. Oh, look. You done fucked up again. Go get your ball. I mean, all of them. I can, this is such a good first episode because all of them have done stuff in this first episode that makes me think, I can't wait to see nine more episodes of this. Of them, yeah, and how they respond to things. Yeah, yeah. although I would, yeah, I do still contend that I would have liked to have seen, uh, even if even if that was his round and then she did a round of her own where things yeah. were you know the seesaw was totally skewed in her favor as yes. well but she was a little bit more active i would yeah. say uh but i believe that that's probably there because obviously i have no idea where this task happened in her run of th- doing things she might have been like look i'm gonna need to start this day with a drink because of everything that happened last night so yeah yeah we're just fair gonna enough. Do this i mean now. it might have been early maybe she went in with the intention of going i'm gonna do nothing i'm gonna do as little as possible during these tasks i'm gonna relax and make alex do it all and then realized she couldn't do that for the whole thing so yeah that... it's like oh, this this lasts a while actually yeah. but um, I, I loved yeah. i loved it on on, the, on this occasion um chris i don't think chris did a proper duel either i'm gonna say it this is not a duel it's a oh, game. What? It's a great game. Ah, oh, that's true. He had he had turtle basketball, and the he was so basketball. well awarded for that. I think. Yeah. Relatively, it's in a the good studio. game. If, if it, it is was a good invent game. a two person game, he's such a little boy, Chris. I think that's yeah. the sort of thing he probably plays on tour with his support act. Exactly, um, but that's not a duel. That's just a, a sport. Exactly. You know? That's a that's a like invent your own sport kind of game as opposed yeah. to like um, actually fight someone. You know, standoff style, mm-hmm. like. You can't invite your own, invent your own sport because that's already been done on time. Exactly, exactly. So he was we've a got Guzball. We don't. We don't. And need a ball this. short. Yes, we yeah. already got Guzball. <laughs> a Chris ball is just. I, I don't know what that is. It's just basketball for extraordinarily short tortoises. Yeah. So for know. me, that that wasn't that wasn't a duel. Um, 
It yeah. worked well as a game, but not a duel. So I, four points was generous. Now, if they had been at like a certain amount of paces from each other, mm-hmm. if they had done the formation and turned around and yeah. then had to get the balls from there, would that yes. have been a duel to you? Yes, I think so. But then they couldn't move. I feel like they wouldn't be yeah. able to move and they just have to throw and try or, and get yeah. them in. Or the moves have to be regimented. Like they, it has to be a certain amount of steps or you can step, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I think I would agree with that. Like a, the same concept done a little bit more duel-like would have been a duel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. It was too chaotic. Yeah. Uh, Bridges was a duel because it, yes. it was joust. It was jousting. And that such a good idea. More. It should have gotten, gotten more. more. That was like, beautiful. That was I guess gorgeous. What Greg was saying was that the build-up was so much and then the j- jousting is so impressive when people gallop towards each other with horses and then one of them gets brutally taken off their horse. It was so slow. Yeah, <laughs> because so slow. Alex was on that little weird pedal thing that's <laughs> destined to make you fall. Like, yeah. I feel like if they had been in shopping carts with the horse heads yeah. or on skateboards or anything and just like had three rounds of coming at each other, that would have been perfect. But I think... Yeah. Maybe it was too, she went too far in the Judy direction of disadvantaging her opponent yeah, yeah. that it just undermined the game entirely because I it agree. looked stunning. Like I was so ready for it to be badass. Yeah, and but I did enjoy Alex slowly being punched with a boxing glove until he lost. That that was very funny. But it, if, if it had more impact, I feel like that could have been four or five points. Yeah, yeah, because I think that do you have to win the duel in order to get the most points? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's no it, it's just the duel the most exciting duel wins, yeah. Yeah, so it's like I think that did I don't know that anybody took the um chose the road of them possibly losing yeah. the duel. Like it seemed like it was set up like do you want to win or lose the duel, but it seems yeah. like if somebody had dramatically spectacularly lost the duel and died or something in a really great way, that's also another way to make it quite exciting. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um Sophie, uh, I, I love the build up to this. Sophie's yeah. one. Yeah. The holding the, the sword and the chain and then doing all of that and then dropping yeah. them and it turning into a rap battle was very strong presentation. Yes. Again, absolutely. I think it was weighted in Sophie's favor because she knew what it was going to be and she'd clearly pre written something and Alex just had to make it up on the spot, <laughs> which, which you can tell because he's so excited. He's so proud of himself when he gets a, a rhyme in there. Yeah, because he's like, no one ever proud. asked me to showcase my rapping skills. <laughs> With a Z. I mean, I've been waiting for the moment to drop these bars. What? <laughs> a lot of the um, a lot of the raps I noticed were sort of quite admin based, talking to each other about how long you the know, battle should be. You know how we be doing. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the B sides are about what's in the inbox. <laughs> um, it was Just very funny. Very admin based. It was like, well, how many should we do now? Yep. <laughs> Are we going to do one more or two more? It's yeah, great. right. Where it's like, has this game even started or not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just still talking about the rules. I uh, loved it. That, and I love yeah. anything that makes Greg realize he's old because he starts saying things like, oh, you've really brought the duel bang up to date. And you're like, rap battles are sort of, I'd say, the, 80, the 80s. <laughs> At the earliest. <laughs> Bang up to date <laughs> with, um, yeah, people who are alive now as opposed yeah. to people who did duels who are all gone. So I, I in that regard, he is correct. Uh, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that was so great. I mean, and kudos to Sophie. I th- like I do appreciate it's such a small thing, but I do appreciate that she got herself up on the stool above because, yeah. uh, you know, if you're watching a rap battle, like so much of it is about the posture as yeah. well as what you actually have to lay down, you know, yeah. and that is an important like a lot of times when you're like focusing on the content, you forget the showmanship and the one upsmanship, which are yeah. at least half, if not most of the actual battle. So like you said, with the chains versus like the feather and the toilet roll, hilarious. But then also just like making sure that she was like doing this down to him, I think was an important aspect of, um, you know, just status. Like it's, you don't think about it until it's it's upended and then you go, oh, it actually makes a big difference. I think she uh, did herself really proud on that one. And yeah. you know, brought the the bat the duel bang up to date she brought it bang up to date um i I loved the ducks being around as the people watching as well i i I what i like about a rap battle is when the crowd are going crazy when people are like oh shit yeah when they're oh falling (laughs) over right (laughs) yeah but unfortunately the ducks couldn't do that i feel like they maybe could have kicked the table after a particularly devastating yeah could have just knocked it whoa yeah (laughs) 
especially if Sophie had done it for her own her yeah, own yeah, lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Just to be like, oh, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Um, it was five points for Sophie's rap battle because she brought it bang up to date. Uh, four points for Chris's non-dual. Uh, three points for Bridget. Two points for Ardle. And another one point for Judy. But she did it in her own way. Okay, little Alex Horn. I'm going to defeat you with brains, not brawn. I'm going to make you wish you'd never been born and leave you feeling so forlorn. Okay, little Sophie Duker. This is going to go nuclear. How many verses do we have to do? Will one do, or do you want two? OK, I think we need two. I think that's the minimum that we have to do. I think we need to do two verses at least. Otherwise, our raps will seem creased and not that good. My name's little Alex. I'm wearing a cape. There's only so much of this that you can take. I don't use cigarettes. I like to vape. So you better read that word on that tape. Caution, you're trying to caution me. Well, little Alex Horn, you're going to see this rap is going to act like a diuretic because right now you're being pretty pathetic. Mm, very nice. I feel quite bad about this. Yeah. I don't like threatening you. You look, you're it's smiling a lot. Pathetic. Right. Instead of doing this, we could just go on a bender if you choose this duel to surrender. I'd like to surrender and not do the duel anymore because I can't think of any more rhymes. Bender? Bender. Right. Now, the live task, I'm not going to read through all the rules of this because it's going to take me about 25 minutes. Yeah. But safe to say it was counting one by one and every round there was a new rule based on what number you were saying. So it ended yes. with having to say things in French, having to pretend to be sick if there was an E in it, uh, spinning around if there was a T. Uh, all numbers are in French. Um, squat on odds, jump on evens, multiples of three, saluting, f- pronounced multiples of f- four completely wrong. So many rules. Safe yes. to say, Desiree, I would have gone out in round one. Yeah. There is absolutely easily. no way I could have done this. Well, now I think I think you might have made it to round two. I think round one is just like someone was just like uh, like saw a shiny thing. But yeah. it's once you get to that next one, you know. Well, I guess everyone made it through round one or the first rule, and then it was the yeah. second rule that I think mm-hmm. Bridget got out on. And I, that was just one of those like, w- w- what was going on? It seemed yes. apparent to everybody. But then after that, things leveled up profoundly yeah. in a way where it was like, because it was like you know every multiples of three had to have a. We were, is that no fours? Most of the three were a salute. Four, yes. you had to pronounce the numbers wrong. But the quick highlight of the whole episode oh, for me God. was Judy suggesting how you pronounce mispronounce a number. <laughs> Just going like, oh, you wouldn't do that. You go, hang <laughs> in. <laughs> You know, and that part was correct. She did mispronounce it entirely. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, she makes me laugh so much. She's, oh man, I mean, what a delight. Like, I, you know, she's one of those people that I would love to see win, but I kind of don't care. Like, I feel like no. she exists outside of time, outside yeah. of rules, outside of Taskmaster. She is a, just a force of like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> also, what a force she was. Apparently she was, when they were filming the studios of Taskmaster, she was filming Strictly Come Dancing at the same time. <gasps> oh, my God. Um, that is unbelievable. It was Chris's victory here. Um, but I, by I thought omission. Sophie found the perfect technique as well, and she just missed it at the end. Yeah, she had just dragged it out too long because yeah. it was just slightly too long for her to be able to remember. the. I feel like if she had stopped sooner, maybe she would have remembered the fake vomit bit yeah. Yeah. on Katha. But uh, also, if you're mispronouncing the word, then you're not going to remember that there's an E yeah. at the end of it. Very tricky. Very tricky. Yeah. Uh, so it was yeah. Chris's victory, and he seemed relieved that the game was over, as yeah. I would have been. Yeah. <laughs> Chris takes the first episode with 23 points. Sophie on 18 points, Bridget on 16 points, and Judy and Ardell languishing at the bottom with 10 <laughs> points. Um, but one of them did strictly during yeah, this. Exactly, so yeah, exactly. Let's keep it all in context. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now, Desiree, it's episode one. Yeah. Do you have any predictions this early as to who you think might win Taskmaster Series 13? Okay. I have some thoughts. Um, uh, but bear in mind, this comes from someone who uh, got came in third slash fourth. Okay. Um, and only third because I was like, well, I'm tied with Alan. How is that fair? Um, so, yeah, I'm that grade grubbing kid who is like, um, excuse me. No one he said we we're going to be tested on that. It's like, okay, fine. It doesn't count. Um, so, uh, I mean, based on what I've learned from my series, I feel like, okay, I feel like it's not going to be art all. Um, okay. <laughs> I think say? that, you know what? I think that might be fair based on what we've seen in episode one um i i mean obviously i mean it sounds it seems pretty boring to say since he won the episode that it could be chris but he seems exactly the kind of person who is going to be in the right place at the right time Mm -hmm. not only for the the uh you know like he's got that that sort of uh boyish sort of like i want to play the game and like you know or and or like you know cheat at the game or whatever you know like that kind of thing for the the actual vts but i think also in the studio, I feel like he knows when to kind of come forward and when to kind of like let other people take each other out. Yes. Um, so that that's I think that bodes well for him. I um, really want like Sophie's my girl, so I really want it to be Sophie. But I also know that she's quite bright and that that doesn't help you on this show. Because <laughs> I feel like most people who are super duper bright are like rule followers yeah. and rule following will get you nowhere on Taskmaster. I've come to find out. So I think that, you know, um, you know, it's so like she redefined, she, you know, she brought like the dual game bang up to date. Like she will redefine the genre, but I don't think she's going to pull a Judy kind of move and just like mm-hmm. not do it and be yeah. like, you know, balls to a wall about it. And like, sometimes it's not going to, pay off but sometimes it's going to pay off in spades like Mm -hmm. that kind of thing so i feel like judy's a wild card in here so like i i want it to be sophie i think it'll likely be chris and if it was judy it would make my whole month you know (laughs) (laughs) because i would love i would love to see uh, who cares triumph in this case yeah and she brings that devil may care kind of vibe to everything she's doing because she'll just show up on the day and tell you what it should be and look at yeah. you really super serious like <laughs> you're gonna buy that and i respect anyone who could pull that off perfect desiree thank you so much for coming back oh, on the taskmaster podcast what a pleasure love, love thank having you so you back. much for having me uh welcome back anytime of course uh thank and you. now we have to get you to rate your experience on the Taskmaster podcast between the uh, points of one and five in the style oh. of the Taskmaster. Have you had a nice time on the podcast? Uh, and could you rate the experience between one and five? I have had a nice time on the podcast. I I want to say five, but mm. I also don't want to give you the gratification for some mm. reason, and I don't know why. Yeah. This, I think I, you don't need to know why, but this happens a lot. Uh, a lot of our guests will tell me that they want to give me five, but they don't. They, I think people just don't want me to, you know, rest on my laurels. They don't want me to yeah. feel smug. We want you to find that hidden ghost duck is what sure. we want. Like, yeah, yeah. and you need, you know, you got to keep you keen, keep you hungry, like junkyard dog, throw water on your face, tie you up to the tree with a chain, bowl of food, <laughs> bowl of water for a month. You need to figure it out on your own, you know, like, That's right. and then one day no you'll one be a fighter. should ha- no one should have that image that close to the front of their brain. You've just plucked <laughs> that out so easily. <laughs> How can you reel that off so quickly? That's just, I don't know. That's, that's having a dog in California. They live outside and yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of like, oh, dogs need to be fine. It's got a place to crap. It's outside. It's got water. It's fine. You know, you have to chain it up. Otherwise, it'll dig a hole under the fence and impregnate all the other dogs in the neighborhood. Not speaking from experience. Definitely speaking from experience. So <laughs> so you want, to, you want to chain me up outside and let me impregnate all the dogs in the local area? Yeah, right? well, no, so saying? that you don't. But oh, eventually, so- we're going to take you off the chain because you're super cute and we want to play with you. And then we're going to forget. And then suddenly, all the little dogs in the neighborhood are going to have like a little black and white spotted puppies yeah, because yeah. you got off the chain and you're like oh dirty dog <laughs> dirty dog go get him go get him boy <laughs> so it's four points so it's four points yeah, yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much desiree cheers thank you <laughs>
There we go. Thank you very much for coming in again, Desiree. Absolutely uh, wonderful guest. We'll have Desiree back whenever. Uh, she's marvellous. Uh, that was great. What a great way to kick off the series. I can't wait to see what they all get up to in the coming nine weeks. We'll be here every step of the way. Come back next Thursday at 10pm, straight after the main show on Channel 4 at 9pm to hear me chat to Sophie Duker. Yes, Sophie Duker, star of Series 13. Come along, see what she has to say for herself, uh, and we will talk about the episode specifically. Don't forget Taskmaster Podcast, the people's podcast, which will be available wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you very much for listening. We will see you next week. Goodbye. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.